So, um, Phil, are you excited to play Boa Beard or US Civil War Beard? These historical beards come from one of two time periods, either the Boer War, belonging to a Boer, or the US yeah. Civil War, belonging to a Confederate. So tell me, Phil, are these beards Boer <laughs> Beards or US Civil War Beards? Play the game yourself with family and friends. Exactly. Well, this isn't even a game. I don't. I don't know if we're not just there looking at them all, and they're all paraded. But anyway, shut up. Um, Boer War Two is well, obviously it's nineteen. The second world, second Boer War, obviously ended in nineteen o two. The American Civil War was uh, ended eighteen sixty five. I know these things. So I'm looking at eight beards. Top left, we've got a sort of. Um, Thick moustache, one end pop pointing up, one end drooping down. Um, I'm, I'm just because of the sepia quality of the image. I'm going to say American Civil War beard. Bad beard. This Phil is a Boer beard belonging uh... to Louis Boffa. Uh, should I give you a little fact, fun fact about Louis Boffa? Yeah. He was elected the first Prime Minister of South Africa, once South Africa became an independent nation. Uh, so after the war, he worked towards reconciliation with the British uh, and eventually even uh, became a sort of supporter of the idea of the Boers becoming part of a united South Africa within the British Empire. But uh, mm. perhaps a more fun fact than that... That's, that's a- a duality reflected in the fact that one side of the tip of his moustache has turned up and the other is, is uh, pointed it's down. It's an interesting point. Yeah, I, I had not considered that. But yeah, the beard might talk Make of his man. future. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, another fact about him. He captured Winston Churchill on his ill-fated armoured train. Okay, next beard. Next beard. Okay, so looking at that, I, I feel like I recognise this beard from... The American Civil War. I think um, I'm going to say American Civil, Civil War beard. I think that it might even be Robert E. Lee himself. He's going for American Civil War beard. We have a beard win. Yes, this is an American Civil War beard belonging not to Robert E. Lee. It was very Samuel bold of Jackson. you to suggest who the beard belonged to. Uh, it actually belonged to a general called Ambrose Hill, oh. who was a veteran of dozens of battles and was killed at Petersburg just yeah, a few months before the war's end. Would you like to know a little fact about Ambrose Hill? Before you say that, are all are they all racist? But probably the Confederate. Yeah, symbols. yeah. Actually, I think we can say with certainty that whether it belongs to a Boer beard or a uh, uh, American Civil War beard, they probably or a were beard. varying Real degrees beard. of racist. Yeah. Um, but sorry, could do, uh, carry on with that. Don't don't let this detract from the facial hair. Was he returned from furlough with a case of gonorrhea, and the go. medical complications from this caused him to miss so many classes that he had to repeat his third year. Is this been back this back to the beards number yes. three: Boer beard or U.S. Civil War beard? Hmm. I'm going to say. Boar beard. This is no. indeed... Oh, yes. A boar beard. Well done. A beard win. This beard belongs to Jacobus Philip Snyman. Does I couldn't like really find too many great facts. Santa Claus. Yes, Santa. It does look a bit Santa-ish. It's long and bushy and white. I couldn't find too many facts about old Jacobus. Um, other than he was described as an exceedingly courteous gentleman... Staunch government man, one of the shrewdest and best to do burgers in the district. Best uh, to do it, burgers. He did the best <laughs> burgers. <laughs> so a burger was like a uh, a boer landowner, not not a flipper. He didn't cook the best burgers. <laughs> Maybe he cooked good burgers. They they did like to raise cattle. The boers so <laughs> Maybe he cooked burgers. Coming to that. Old yeah. Snyman, he had a fence named after him. The Snyman fence in, uh, <laughs> in 1896. Designed, actually, to keep infected animals 
who Uh-oh. were carrying something called uh, Rinderpest, or cattle plague, out of the Boer territories. So maybe he did do good burgers as well, because his cattle were pestilence-free. Which is the best you can hope for in the burger in, the, in 1902. Right, onwards we, we ride. Number four, beard number four. Mm. It's a really basic image, that. It looks like Captain Haddock or something drawn in, in charcoal by one of your lovely, <laughs> lovely daughters. It looks like something drawn in charcoal by a, a child. That's the take <laughs> I'll leave in. Um, so uh, it's not Captain... I mean, Pugwash, I beg your pardon. Not. Okay, I'm going to just take that again then. Number four looks very much like Captain Pugwash has let himself go. <laughs> or Blue it is toe. a bushy beard, isn't it? Bushy mm. and black. Um, so I'm going to say uh, American Civil War beard. And you are quite right. This is an American Civil War beard. This is Jeb Stewart, a famous cavalryman. Uh, he died quite young at the age of 31. In 1864, um, he actually in his youth earned the moniker Beauty, but it wasn't a compliment. It was like one of these uh, pun nicknames, like calling someone who's really, really big, tiny, or, or along that line. So he was no Beauty. Yeah. He was said to have a short and retiring chin. Uh, that was totally distracting to anyone who looked at him. Hence, he grew out this big, bushy beard. <laughs> Which wasn't distracting at all. <laughs> Shaped like an ice cream cone. Uh, another little fact about him. He, he loved to dress to impress. So not only did he have this lavish beard, he often sort of festooned himself with a red-lined grey cape and a yellow sash and a flower in his lapel. And on his hat, he always had a, an ostrich plume. So quite the dandy with his beard. 